Hello and welcome to Beyond Reproach. How dare you click, click so early? <laughs> trying to ruin my flow. Trying to get into my head. Psych me out. <laughs> I come to you from North Canton, Ohio, where I'm recording on land belonging to the Kaskaskia Nation. And I am coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, where I'm recording on land belonging to the Ojibwe, Ottawa, Potawatomi, and Wyandot Nations. Yes. All of these nations are just some of many still very much out here doing their thing. We'd like to acknowledge that. This mm-hmm. is the show where we talk about whatever we want because it's the mini-sode and we don't got no format. Absolutely not. Yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about generational wealth. Ooh, yes. yes. We hate uh, it. We yes. hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the last episode, uh, we talked a bit about how and why redlining has historically prevented Black American families from building generational wealth. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to actually sort of talk about what generational wealth actually is and what it means and why it's important. When I was a kid at school learning the golden rule, teacher often used to say, if you don't tell a lie, there's not a reason why you can't be like Washington someday. Oh, good Washington, be a married man and never, never tell a lie. So first of all, generational wealth is anything with monetary value that is passed down from one generation to the next. Home ownership is one of the easiest and most common ways to build generational wealth, even though obviously most homeowners are not really thinking about it that way when they buy a home. That's not what they're like, I'm buying this so my great grandson can go to college, you know? Yeah. But, but home ownership just tends to be the first step in building generational wealth because as long as your home is well maintained over the years, home values tend to appreciate over time. So if you buy a home and it's paid for, it's going to just keep increasing in value. And it's going to mean that the people who own it after you are going to benefit from that. But along with a family home, property, savings, investments, stocks, bonds, and family businesses are all examples of wealth that can be passed down to the next generation. If your grandparents bought a home and paid it off in full and passed it down to your parents, Or if your parents started a family business and passed it down to you, these are examples of generational wealth. When you were passed down a home or an inheritance or Or an emerald, emerald, an emerald, yes, some jewels. (laughs) If if you're passed something that generates income for you or, or has value for you and your family, you are benefiting from something that you didn't necessarily have to build yourself. But that means that you benefit from a certain level of financial freedom that you wouldn't have had otherwise. And then you have the opportunity to focus on building other forms of wealth or investing in things like education that can help build wealth in the future. So that's why generational wealth tends to compound over time. Each generation can potentially leverage the wealth that they inherited from the last to build even more wealth for the next They can take the value of their parents' home to buy themselves a bigger home, or they can sell their parents' blue-collar business to buy an even more profitable white-collar business or or start a new business, or they could use their inherited financial freedom to invest in their children's education, ensuring that their children will have greater earning potential going forward, Mm -hmm. uh, spreading their wealth to yet another generation. Now, not obviously not all white Americans have benefited from generational wealth and not all families of color have had to struggle without it. But the fact remains that one of the easiest and most common ways to build generational wealth is owning, maintaining, and improving a home. And thanks to redlining, this was simply not possible for multiple generations of Black Americans. Yeah. But it started, you know, with the inception of this country, like pushing off natives, taking land. Land is Absolutely. how you build wealth. Yes. And yeah, taking absolutely. black indigenous farms. That's how you build wealth. Like, yeah, redlining is just like the cherry on top, really. Absolutely. Just like you said, it compounds. Yeah. And that's that's many, many 
hundreds of years of 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 compound wealth accruing. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Centuries <laughs> of of wealth being built off of stolen labor and stolen land. Yeah. Yeah, redlining is is horrible and like it's still such a problem. But yeah, it started it started at the beginning and yeah, yeah it's 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 a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So not only did redlining keep the American dream out of reach for for generations of black families, but also between 1944 and 1956, the GI Bill and the VA loan program also helped ensure that that dream was a reality for millions of white men at the time. You know, making sure that that this would be available for even you gotta help them. poor white people. Yeah. yeah. While making sure that black people didn't have access to it. The years just after World War II saw the greatest expansion of the American middle class in American history. And the GI Bill had a lot to do with that. It gave free college and cheap. No, wait, loans. don't you mean bootstraps? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Straps. Yes. Yeah. Because that's how they tell it. <laughs> it. It. I gave... work for everything I got. Well, yes. Okay. They didn't you, they were handing out these bootstraps during the yeah, war? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you forgot your bootstraps, you got an extra <sighs> set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the GI Bill gave free college and cheap home loans to millions of veterans. But even though. 1.2 million black men fought just as bravely during the war. Most black veterans were not given these same opportunities. By the time the original GI Bill ended, nearly 8 million World War II veterans had received education or training, and 4.3 million home loans worth $33 billion in like 1950s money had wow. been handed out. That's yeah. amazing. As employment, college attendance, and wealth surged for white families, the wealth gap between black and white Americans not only continued, you know, over the centuries that it had been going on, but it also widened. Okay. Gotta at, keep it going. Yeah. But it like it widened at breakneck speed yeah. in, in like a decade. Thanks largely to racists in Congress, the way the bill was implemented was up to local governments. Oh, no. Re yes. Yeah. So that's a great idea. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. I just so, voted in some ballot initiatives, and I'm just like, no, you guys, you're not going to do this. I mean, it's probably going to pass, but yeah. they're trying to change the voting laws. They're trying to make it up to the local jurisdiction, and I'm just like, oh, no, no. No. Nope. We're not going to do this. Who thinks that we're this not is a good idea? This. Yeah. Yeah. And there was another like bail reform thing that's going to leave it up to a local judge. And I'm like, no, let's just keep it no. with the Ohio Supreme Court. Let's just do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just thanks. keep it where it is. Oh I think God. we're good. <laughs> oh, Ohio. Yeah. But come yes. visit us. We're great. <laughs> <laughs> move here. Yeah. For move work here. And, Find yeah. it all. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know what all is, but okay. <laughs> all the racism you can dream for. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ugh. I'm sorry, um, I derailed that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but so, you know, because because this was implemented on a local level, Black men were often intentionally excluded from, from basically, you know, benefits that they earned, putting their yeah. lives on the line for this country. Um, yes. But even if they were lucky enough to qualify for the VA loan program, then they had to find a bank who would agree oh, to no. give them a mortgage. Yeah. Oh, no. And then they had to find a property that was available to them. The hoops. Because of, yeah, exactly. And if they could find all of that, despite, you know, racist lending practices and redlining and segregation, if they were finally able to find a home, they were usually only allowed to buy homes in the poorest parts of town where the homes were worth much less than than where they would be otherwise. Yeah, but they were sell sold at a higher price. That was a yeah, fun thing absolutely. that they were doing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you can get a brand new house in a white <clears throat> neighborhood, but like we're going to give you a slum for the same price. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in 1947, of the more than 3,200 VA guaranteed home loans given to veterans in 13 Mississippi cities. Oh no. <laughs> two of them went to black buyers. Wow. 
of of thirty two hundred. Two of them. I'm I'm impressed that there's two. That there's two. Yeah, yeah. And this yeah. obviously was not was not just happening in the South, even though northern these people must have been think. light skinned. There must have been a, right. A, I don't know <laughs> totally. what happened. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Two of them. Two of them found a way to get in there. They yeah. They were buying like swamp shacks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's um, funny because it's true right yeah i mean <laughs> not to be shitty about it but that's yeah. that's all that was available to them yeah um yeah so this was not just a problem in the south even though no we like to pretend to think, yeah yes in in new york and the northern suburbs of northern new jersey of the sixty-seven thousand mortgages insured by the gi bill Less than a hundred of them were purchased by non-white buyers. Yeah, I forget who. Not Sydney Poitier. Oh my God, who was in that musical with Car and Carmen? What's his name? Harry Belafonte. Thank you. Oh my God. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. He bought like a whole apartment in Brooklyn just so he could rent it out to other black people because there was no way that they could get leases. And he yeah. struggled to do that yeah. as like a superstar. That's unbelievable. Like, yeah. I think you've told me that story before, but that is like the fact that even with all of the money that he was bringing in. Money still... can't buy you out of white supremacy. Not yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's so upsetting, but he was able to buy it and, you know, rent it out to artists but yeah, the, the hoops that he had to jump through. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. But yeah, the same goes for the GI Bill's uh, college funds. Many universities wouldn't accept black men, even if they could get the local government to agree to pay for their education. Were schools, just, schools were still segregated though some, in the 40s. Yeah, so, so you know, a so, lot of them, they just couldn't get, they couldn't get, yeah. you know. It's bullshit, but it is what it, it is. It, it's been yeah. this era is is just the cherry on top of, of centuries of yeah. of stolen. These are the wealth. these are the branches. The roots go very deep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, because of the GI Bill, the the grandparents and great grandparents of millions of white Americans today benefited from this huge government subsidized wealth generation scheme. And their their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren have benefited for generations. Yeah. And meanwhile, the black men who fought alongside them, albeit in segregated units, were prevented from taking advantage of the same rewards for their service and their lives. Yeah, there's and, a really good book about this. It's called When Reparations Were White. And it talks mm. all about the GI Bill and just all of the the wealth that was created because of that. And yeah, yeah like you said, how it was denied to people of color. It's and unbelievable. yeah, yeah, there's a lot of receipts, a lot of scholarship on it. It's yeah. So what does that all mean for today? How does that, how has that all added up over the years? Uh, we will discuss that after a short break. Yes. BRB. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're live here. I'm one of your hosts, Hamish. And I'm your other host, Aaron Conway. And welcome to our show, The Third Wheel. And today we're joined by... Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Blackburn. I'm Josh. My name's James. Yes, I'm Nish. My name's Nija. I'm Gina. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Lil. This is Jakeshri. <laughs> I'm Tam. Hi, I'm Deja. I'm Nickel. I'm Ashley. My name's Dar. I'm Shami. That's just a few of our previous guests. Every episode, we're joined by a Third Wheel to hear their story, debate some juicy topics, and play some games. You can find us everywhere at thirdwheel.fm and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the Third Wheel FM. Like jumping on this podcast, the Third Wheel. Like, I, I love being <laughs> the Third Wheel right now. Like, <laughs> it's fantastic. Okay, we're back from break. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just want to talk briefly about like what the wealth gap is today because of you know not just the gi bill not just redlining obviously centuries of of Fuck i don't shit. 
Yes, there we go. That's <laughs> that's exactly the technical term that I was looking yes, for. Thank you. It's in Webster's. Yes. <laughs> So a 2021 report estimated that the disparity in wealth between white and black households was over $330 billion, with 60% of that wealth coming from inheritances. In 2019, the median wealth of black households in the United States was $24,000 compared to $189,000 for white households. Wow. Wow. Therefore, the typical black household had less than 13% of the wealth of the typical white household, which all adds up to a difference of $165,000 less than the median white household. Just like, I don't understand how people can see this and not see it. You know what I mean? Like, they see it with different eyes. It It's like they... Uh, it's like it's a mental gymnastics that I would assume that you just you feel like, OK, they did something to deserve this. Like, it's not yeah. that I have things that I did not earn that my mm-hmm. parents, 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 parents didn't earn. It's, yeah. you know, it's that I mean, this country is really good at just pitting others against each other. And especially if you're white, like all the the things you must have to just repress in your mind to make yourself OK with this place. And your place in it. Like, I just, I know that it must be hard. Like, I have a lot of empathy for pretending not to see what we all see. Yeah. Because (laughs) that can't be good for your mind. No, absolutely. And so the 400 richest Americans, 400 people, the 400 richest Americans have more total wealth than all 10 million Black American households combined. Yeah. 10, yeah. Black households, the total of black households in this country have about 3% of all household wealth in the country. Meanwhile, the 400 wealthiest billionaires in this country have 3.5%. Yeah. I mean, again, everything is by design. Yeah. This is how this country was structured. Yes. Yeah. And even though Black Americans make up 13% of the United States population, they own less than 2% of American small businesses. Mm. In comparison, white households own 82% of American small businesses, even though they make up only 60% of the population. Again, by design, yes. I mean, (laughs) it's hard to get loans. It's really hard, especially like Black people in tech. It's, I mean, it's, again, this is it's it this is nothing new (laughs) yeah no i know i know yeah i mean this episode is not (laughs) not for me or you you know yeah that's true yeah i feel like we do have some listeners who are not really aware of how deep the problem is and and what the numbers really look like you know what i mean white White adults are also almost three times as likely as Black or Latino adults to get sizable financial help from their parents or other elders in their family. A new poll finds that 38% of white adults say that they have gotten at least $10,000 in gifts or loans from a parent or older relative, while only 14% of Black adults report receiving similar gifts or loans And that number is around 16% for Latinos and 19% for Native Americans. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. There's less money to have. Exactly. Therefore, less to give. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, many people today, including many policymakers in the government, talk about the wealth gap between Black and white Americans as if it has almost only been caused by bad personal choices on the part of individual black people. I mean, they that's, claim, yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what we love. That individual. Yeah. It's not the system. No, no nope. individual you. choice. Mm-hmm. Yes. They claim that if black people would only pull themselves up by their bootstraps yep. and, and work as hard as white people and make good financial choices that they would be just as well off as everybody else. Yeah. They should have just bought Twitter, man, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But the inconvenient facts do not support their bullshit. 
even when black people have advanced degrees, have high power jobs, own their own homes and engage in other behaviors associated with asset building, their wealth is still typically much lower than their white peers. Even today, when black people do everything that racist white people tell them that they should be doing to 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 build wealth for themselves and and pull themselves up by their bootstraps, they receive lower valuations on their homes because of yes. racist, you know, racist Systems. auditors and yeah. Yeah. And and they tend to earn less money compared to white people performing the exact same jobs. Yeah. That's just how the system was designed. Did you hear about that law that just passed in New York, November in, 1? Yes. Yeah. There's like and a how um, Citibank is like you you have to So for those who don't know, starting at the beginning of this month, it's now illegal for jobs to post to not post their salary range for a position. Mm-hmm. You have to survey your workforce and evaluate like what is the range for this work and it has to be posted and not to do so if if you have more than i think four employees which is most most places in new york yeah yeah but citibank to get around it there for every job that's listed currently it says the range is from zero to two million. Oh, for fuck's sake yeah that's what they're doing <laughs> they need to make it so that yeah. they can't do that because yeah they're gonna have to tighten the law now because the financial players don't want to play the, they don't want to be honest about the gaps yeah because there 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 are black employees who probably make a small fraction of what their white peers do and they Absolutely. don't want that on paper and it i mean it should have to do it should have to be about the actual specific position and not like that's what they're saying your entire but entire workforce yeah, yeah. You're not paying anyone zero dollars. Like fuck off. Yeah. No, exactly. They're they're just being they're just being silly. And you're not they're paying trying. like you're not paying your janitors two million dollars. There's not a no. janitor in your in your company that makes that much money. Yeah. For every single job posted now says zero to two million. That is fucking, fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> right? So if you oh, work Christ. in New York and you don't maybe you're job hunting and you see an ad that is based in new york a lot of the jobs haven't been updated but you can like you can basically complain if you see that because it needs to be listed now wow every state needs this we need transparency yeah yeah absolutely yeah because these corporations they win when when workers aren't talking to each other about salary and you know there's more of us than them so yeah i'm I'm happy for new york i'm really happy to see Citibank get in trouble because everyone's just like you can't do this so they're they're gonna be i mean they have all the money to fight any sort of trouble but they're gonna have to go in and revise the law they're yeah they're gonna have to fix it eventually hopefully other state other states will follow suit when they start Mm -hmm. seeing how this all works out but yeah i i don't know you know i i am not a lawmaker i don't i'm not a politician i don't know what the answer is to fixing this but obviously the first step is like you said transparency we have to talk about this issue like this is happening it has been happening since this country began yeah and we're never going to fix it if we don't if we keep pretending like it yeah we're not i mean reparations you know is yeah absolutely the way yeah and reparations were called when slavery was ended and, they, and people are like, yeah, we'll think about it. We're working yeah. on it. Like, clock is ticking. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime, but I think eventually it's 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 <clears throat> the only way forward, really. Yeah. You know, uh, after the Native people get their land back, I guess we're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there. it's like how do you fix it and and yeah reparations obviously is like you give people money it's not simple it's i mean it's not hard it's like how do you fix poverty you give people money yeah exactly yeah (laughs) before i wrap it up i also just want to say uh i did have reparations as as an example of like something to do but i also want to say that in 2021 senator reverend Raphael warnock introduced Mm. the gi bill restoration act Uh, which is a bill that would provide the families of black veterans of World War II a transferable benefit that their descendants 
could use to attend college, secure housing, start businesses, and build generational wealth. Senator Warnock said, quote, racial inequality in how the immense benefits of the original GI Bill were dispersed are well documented. We've all seen how those inequities have trickled down over time, leaving Black World War II veterans and their families without the benefits they earned through service and sacrifice. The GI Bill Restoration Act represents a major step toward righting this injustice and repairing the economic harms experienced by Black World War II veterans and their families as a result of discrimination and will help ensure the, their descendants can access the full range of GI benefits they earned through their heroic service. Yeah, so it's awesome. basically like a, a, an advanced form of, you know, reparations for a much smaller cross-section of Black America. Yeah, I think they did something similar with, I think Cory Booker was pushing some bill. I don't know how far it went, but it was aiming to um, target black farmers who had mm. their land stolen by their yeah. white neighbors. I don't know how far it got, but there was there was some sort of monetary compensation. And that was from like the early 1900s. So yeah, yeah. that compounded and, would be real money. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I don't know how far it'll go. I It's, yeah, exactly. I don't know how far this would go either. You know, on, we talked a couple weeks ago about all of the negative campaign ads that we saw leading up to the midterms and how people were like freaking out about crime as like the big issue. But it's another working. Thing that I saw, yeah. It's scary but another people. Another issue that I saw a lot was uh, was I not so much in the ads, but I saw this in print a lot where people were talking about how it was racist against white people to implement programs that financially benefit black people specifically. That's hilarious. Yeah. Considering the history of benefiting white yes, people at exactly. every turn. Ah, yeah. Oh no. But this is what happens when we don't learn about our history. And exactly. there are so yeah. many forces in place that are trying to keep Americans blind from the truth of this country. And yeah. And I, I, again, I just hope the midterms went well. Because they're really trying to rewrite re everything. I mean, it's already rewritten, but yeah, since 2020, yeah. there has been a push towards being a little bit more honest. Not fully honest, but just, you know, a little bit more about this yeah. place. This and is, uh, this, we're recording this episode a couple weeks before, or like before it comes out. So this, we're recording this what two days before the midterm elections yeah so it's yeah. by the time this comes out it'll be a few weeks later but yeah. let's see we'll see how things played out uh, uh again i am optimistic yeah. i think a lot of people are gonna are have just been quiet about either sending in their little absentee ballot or going to early voting or they're planning to go on tuesday and i yeah i choose to believe <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be okay. I hope that I am pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And like, now I'm actually worried about New York. Mm, but yeah. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah. yeah. People have been really motivated by those attack ads, the crime ones, like upstate there. Of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. They they're, know what they're doing. They know how to, they know how to campaign. <sighs> um, I can't be so and I'm just yeah. like, oh, they don't send their best. Ha <laughs> ha. <And I'm> like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't even know. matter. <laughs> yeah. They send their best ad men. Yeah, um, truly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's, that's this, well, very quick and dirty story of generational wealth and what it is and what it means and why yeah. it's a disaster. It is, yeah, it is definitely a disaster. And yeah, it just accrues over time. And it's just so funny that you have these people like Elon Musk who really think they're they're like revolutionaries. And it's like, no, you're just obscenely wealthy. Mm -hmm. And you your dad had an emerald mine, bitch. Like, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Nothing from scratch. Yeah. Oh my God. It's you just, took millions it, and turned it into billions. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Congrats on the back of like all he's going to get sued really significantly from this Twitter thing. Yeah. Because California has really strict 
employee like protections. Mm. So he done fucked up. He Good. didn't give them enough notice and he is. Yeah. They're, they're planning to give people severance if they don't sue. And I just hope enough of them say, you know, class action, let's just do class. action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. We shall see. But yeah, thank you for that. That was really, I mean, again, it wasn't for me, but yeah. it was, it was a good like distillation of some of the problems with uh, generational wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously this is a mini so I couldn't really get into like all of everything, no. <laughs> even if it was a full episode, even if it was a whole series yeah, for, yeah. for a season. Yeah. yeah. Good God. But yeah, this is, this is, this is really good. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully people who have a hard time understanding the concept of what generational wealth is and why it's, you know, why it is so unequal in this country will have learned, learned something from this. Yeah. It's a lot, but yeah, thank you. And yeah, yeah, thank, thank you all for listening um, Mm -hmm. to Beyond Reproach. This has been Stephanie Domingo. And Tuxler's all. Thank you to our new audio editor, Dev. We could not do this <laughs> without him. Facts or facts, America. It would be impossible. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thanks for Bye, listening. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to Beyond Reproach. Please note that we are not historians, we're just a couple of drunks who never shut up and love history. A full list of all source information can be found in the show notes on our website. Please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe. Written reviews are especially important. If you like us, please do one of two things. Leave us a written review on Apple Podcasts, or send this episode to a friend, family member, or someone who you think would be into it. Don't forget to follow us on social media and make sure you follow us on Instagram because we post our cocktail recipes the Thursday before each full episode. Please drink along with us if you are not driving. We also have a shop on beyondreproachpod.com. Get your merch, brand yourselves. And we also have exclusive content on Patreon where you can directly support the production of our show.